Hey guys, happy holidays still. Uh, I am in my shed. It is the day after Christmas, so we're still celebrating. Oh, what is that? Yeah, that is a 1960s Silvertone AM radio, complete with static. Do not covet, do not covet. In fact, this episode is going to be really interesting because I had something happen to me over the holidays that may have happened to me before with somebody else, but I didn't know it, but it happened to me this time, and I kind of want to call your attention and share it with you. Um, let's start off by saying, you know, my ancestors came to America from Norway in the 1860s and 70s, and for some reason they picked northern Wisconsin to settle in, and I don't know why, maybe if I look across longitude and latitude or whatever it is, maybe Norway, uh, where it's situated, maybe Wisconsin is like the Florida of Norway, I don't know. Um, and my uh, Czechoslovakian side of the family came to the country in about 1910, between 1910 and 1915. So I got to thinking, what was Christmas like in 1870? Well, I'll tell you what it wasn't like. You didn't get on the internet and get your own list together and go to dot com and get exactly what you wanted and then hit send and when it all came uh, on the truck you had your mommy wrap it for you and pretend that you were surprised it was not like that I guarantee you well I wasn't old enough to be there but I guarantee you it wasn't like that anyway so this Christmas as you know, I've been working on a number of kit guitar bodies that I turn into unique things. And I finally built Tammy, my daughter, a guitar. Well, first off, if you don't know Tammy's story, I'm going to give you a link up there. Margaret Garrett tells it really, really well. Um, I appreciate the wishes I got and the comments I got for those that know Tammy and what's behind this. Um, but... Um, Kick guitars, what are kick guitars? You know what? I will give you a playlist right up there, right about now, that takes you through the build of a guitar I called the Mississippi Mudslide. Now, what happened to me? Well, let's start off with the guitar kit that I used to build this guitar for Tammy. Let's take a look at one like it. And the moral of the story here in the end is. If you don't want to just go to the store or tell people to order their own gifts and you have the ability to touch someone who's into music by making them a guitar, I will tell you what, there's nothing more rewarding than you providing your kid, your friend, uh, a relative, something that you made that will have them playing and you're giving them the gift of music. Anyway, let's take a look at what I started and then we'll take a look at what Tammy's guitar ended up looking like some details about it and then we'll finally hear you know what Tammy is inseparable from that guitar and I'm going to give you a clip of her playing the guitar uh, because finally she got one that's not upside down she's been playing upside down right-handed six string arch tops for way way too long anyway let's start with what I started with. All right, guys, excuse the wiggly camera, but I always forget to show you the before on my Palmiro Junk Pile Guitars projects. I want you to meet Lefty. Lefty is an ES-175 kit from Guitar World, Guitar Kit World. It has a Florentine cutaway, and we've done one of these before that we called the Mississippi Mudslide. But this one is a lefty, and the reason it's a lefty is because Tam Tam is always playing right-handed guitars and playing them upside down like Elizabeth Cotton did. Look that one up. Maybe I'll give you a link to one of her videos right up there right about now. But anyway, yeah, feel free not to participate. Participate. Blah, blah, rented lips, participate, chick flick, teal, pointer. Anyway, here it is. This is the before 
wait until you see the after. All right, for the sake of context, you're going to get a little glimpse here of what the end product was. There we go. Not too much. We'll get into that here in a minute. But let's take a look at what we started with. It's a guitar kit world kit. Pretty typical. You start off with a neck that needs some finishing, some shaping on the headstock, some fret work. Not too much here, but a little bit on the ends. Um, nice binding. I love the way this neck fits down in the pocket. There's going to be a little sanding, rub a little chalk or graphite on there and get it to fit into, look at this body. Um, the guitar we're talking about, the body didn't start this way. This is spalted maple. Um, they took and bookended two pieces of wood so the decay pattern, what's happening here is I'm an artist, an arborist, excuse me, um, but there's something called coded compartmentalization of decay in trees. And trees find a way to wall off damage and put up these barrier walls. And this is a really cool thing. But you can get a number of kit types, body styles or whatever from Guitar Kit World. And then over here in this pocket, we have everything you need. All the electronics, even strings and... Uh, uh, a cable that will plug into an amp. You don't have an amp, but this is typically a kit. I'll tell you what. Guess what? This is not a Gibson ES-175. Gibson ES-175s have a Florentine cutaway. Um, Gibson Super 400s have a single uh, cutaway that is not Florentine. This is not a Gibson. It will never be a Gibson. It wasn't was not intended to be a Gibson. And if you are putting these kits together and doing what you can to deceive people into thinking they are a Gibson ES-175, you are committing a crime. Enough said. Get a kit. Build your own guitar. Make it unique. Okay, while we are here, Guitar Kit World has any number of body styles available in kits. Um, solid bodies. Uh, Semi-hollows, but I like the arch top, hollow bodies. Let's take a look at another one here. This is one with a single cutaway, more typical. Um, again, everything is here, neck, uh, um, a number of hardware options. This one has a whammy bar. Check that out. Gold finish. Now, I will tell you that I highly customize the stuff I do, so I may use the hardware, I may not, but I will tell you this, if I'm out looking for a body, if I try to make this body at my skill level, it's not going to happen. If I try to buy a body where the neck fits in the way this does with the minimal work that happens, that's not going to happen. But this, I uh, have built a few of these, and I think you've seen some results like the Bob Log, the third guitar, which was, yes, of course, the first place ribbon winner in his class at the Antelope Valley Fair in Lancaster, California, cultural capital of the world. But the takeaway here is these bodies can be highly customized and turned into something that is unique and, I don't know, does somebody you know, would they like this? I mean, they function well enough to when they're done to perform in live trash blues shows. So anyway, now let's take a closer look at Tammy's guitar. All right, let's start off taking a closer look by looking at the headstock, which was sent to me in a paddle configuration, meaning it was big and I cut it out. You saw some silver tones and, and uh, K guitars having what they called a Coke bottle bottom uh, neck or headstock, and I mimicked that. Uh, there's some good tuners on here. Notice the Chick Flick Teal screws. That is something <laughs> that I'm known for. Uh, coming down the neck, there are some spots where people like to, especially when using a slide, drop in, 12th fret, 3rd uh, fret, 2nd whatever. 
I'll put a coin in there. I don't know if you know this, but Tammy's real name is Tamara, which is Hebrew for date palm. Um, so Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitars is actually a moniker on Paul Mero, Paul Mero's, which are people who work the crowns of date palms to produce the dates that you like to eat that bread made out of Paul Miro. Get it? Okay. Moving on down. The neck looks good. We've got a strap button here. And of course, we've got our grease zerk just in case your plane gets rusty. Back of it is hollowed out. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can other zoom out. There we go. This thing's stained really well. And the binding looks good against the stain we use. And we'll talk more about that when we flip this thing and see the front. Okay, let's do a quick pan up and down before we get into the details. This guitar is kind of a upside down version of the Mississippi Mudslide, which was a Florentine cutaway guitar we made for our friend Wendy Jean Garrison down in Mississippi. In fact, there's a whole playlist as to how that guitar was done right up there right about now, and you'll figure out a lot went into this. Before we move ahead, this guitar was stained with this stuff. There's some red stuff on there. You can see it. Eucalyptus cideroxalon is a tree that grows um, in California. It's native to somewhere in Australia or someplace in Tasmania over there or something. But as a strategy, when the tree is young, it flexes back and forth and leaks this stuff out. And this stuff coats the trunk, i.e. red iron bark. It is red. And when you mix it with Everclear, you can get this shellac. I gave you an episode link right up there on how to make that. Um, but this guitar is stained with eucalyptus shellac. Now, let's zoom in. I've got some interesting stuff here. Bear with me. Okay, let's take a look at some of the front of the guitar details. This is a replica of an old Alice Chalmers metal sign. We just traced out the headstock after we cut the shape we wanted and pinned that on there. Um, the holes for the tuners were cut first and we did some of our fancy stuff to get holes in here. Um, we used black tuners because they seem to go with the theme better. Um, there's a coin up there, believe it or not, that is from the Roman times. It's at least 1800 years old. It has a palm tree on it. Uh, it's from a Lebanon place where the ruler of Rome at that point thought, you know what, we can do some civic work and make people happier by producing coins and giving them their own economy. Wow, what a novel idea if you're going to dominate someone else's world to let them have some actual choice in what they do. Here's that Eli Green voodoo hoodoo bead. Maybe that's why that donkey is braying in the background right now. But if you don't know who... Eli Green is, and you better have a look at a video up there where he's singing with Fred McDowell called Bulldog Blues. If you know anything about Bob Log and Do-Rag, you'll know what Bulldog Blues by Fred McDowell means. Anyway, um, moving into the matchbooks here, um, I pick things that Tam can read herself. Um, this one is Tam O'Shantner here on South Dakota. Um, Let's zoom down a little bit or pan down a little bit. Does Tammy love Bob Log? Um, she loves Sun House. Um, here's a Greyhound bus. Tammy appeared in a video where we made a guitar for Gallia Volt that was Greyhound bus themed. Episode right up there, right about now. And anything with a guitar on it, Tammy loves that. Um, we didn't need a three-way switch. Tammy's rough on things. This guitar is rough and tough. can be tumbled around. Three-way switches break off. So we just wired it up where she doesn't need that. And 
put in this amp gauge from a 1930s Chevy automobile. Now, moving on down, we found a vanity plate from Mississippi. A lot of my guitars are Mississippi themed. We put in these dog ear pickups. They fit the tune pretty good. We painted the inside of the guitar black, which accents the F holes against the eucalyptus kino stain shellac here and I've got a couple things on order here um, this bridge here that allows uh, you to tune each one for intonation and these knobs right here um, we're going to replace that with black hardware like the trapeze tailpiece it has a single uh, jack over here that's wired to everything and this is it so I'll tell you what let's zoom back out the other way and we'll give this a pan up and down one more time now we're going to cut away to have Tammy actually playing this thing because she has had it in her hand since she realized it was one of her Christmas presents Take it away, Tam. There you go. Um, I'll tell you what, this took me back to a time again where maybe there wasn't stores, maybe you didn't have money, maybe you couldn't get into town, any number of reasons where your Christmas gift was something your father or mother made you and that, that was the extent of it and sometimes I wonder where has our society gone to with that kind of stuff missing. So I'll close out. It's really, really easy to start thinking ahead and picking out that birthday or something. You can do one of these kits. There's everything you need in there to make it work. Uh, and some simple hand tools, sandpaper, a couple chisels, a file, some glue, that kind of stuff. And you can turn out a product that somebody will treasure. So think about that. Again, thank you for all the comments that came in about Tammy and... Uh, what that side of life is all about because that's what's really important to me happy holidays and you know what don't be afraid to put the money into something that will be passed down in your family or that a friend will treasure forever and most of all thank you guitar kit world great product and i appreciate the support your customer service team gives and especially your partnership on this left-handed guitar See you soon.